Good evening, everybody. How are y'all? Glad to see everybody come back tonight. Didn't run away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to sing Christmas songs again. I know everybody's tired of them, but no, we're not really. So we got to get them all in this month and maybe even into January just because. And maybe do a special in July or August. So, you know. So we're going to sing uh, Joy to the World first. <coughs> and if I go out, y'all just sing extra low. <coughs> Now we're going to, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we're going to ask Brother Bill if he will open up with prayer. And now we're going to sing uh, Silent Night. We're not going to do that.
going to turn it over to the uh, first Brother Maddox. We're going to turn it over to Brother James Maddox. So, well, you are. You, you came before he did, so. Good evening. I hope everybody's feeling good and rested and can stay awake. I'm in no hurry and I don't got nowhere to go. So, uh, Jerry said I could take three hours tonight. And, you know, I never turned down a time, so yeah, I guess we're here. All righty, tonight I've got uh, kind of a s different situation. Uh, you know, the Lord speaks to us in many different ways. And uh, right now, what is everybody talking about? Christmas. Everything's Christmas, Christmas. But, you know, I've, and I started looking at that. Of course, I've got a few sermon outlines put aside, but uh, I, I started looking at some stories about Christmas, and the Lord says, no, that's what I want you to do. I said, well, okay, show me what to do. So I started reading through the Bible. And uh, he came, we came up with uh, what he wanted me to do. And so I uh, started studying it and making a new outline, and that makes it tough. But at any rate, he said, uh, I want you to talk about Jonah. And I said, Jonah? He said, yeah, I said, Jonah, that's, that guy the fish swallowed. We're going to talk about him far. He said, well, because I told you to. So I, that's what, and yet today, tonight, I hope to tie it together in a way that it will help us both with our time, ourselves, and with our ch uh, Christmas. And I, I think maybe we can if we go from Genesis to Revelation, if I can find my place. Somebody lost my place. Hopefully, there you go. All right. Uh, I'm going to start tonight in the service with uh, reading the Bible from uh, Hosea, the fourth chapter, the fourth, uh, first through the fourth verses. Hosea, fourth chapter, one through four. I'm not going to talk about the fish tonight. I'm not going to talk about uh, him uh, going to Nineveh tonight much. All I'm, what I've got here is what I call a controversy. Have we ever? Have you ever had a controversy? If you tell me you hadn't, then I'm going to have to pray for you. Because all of us have. Well, Jonah had a controversy. He just flat didn't do what God told him to, did he? He said, I ain't going. I'm going to go catch me a ship and go somewhere else. Or I'm going to go to another town. So he done what he said. He got on the ship. He was headed that way. But something interfered, didn't it? So we're going to look at that a little bit tonight. And then we're going to look at... Uh, uh, the Israelites a little bit in connection with this story because uh, God had a controversy with Israel already because say, Israel had disobeyed. They had, uh, they had been ha having all kinds of sins. In fact, uh, they, Israel had come to the point where that uh, uh, God was, had plumb, uh, none of them, I'm sorry, None of them had come to the point that God says, I'm going to destroy that little town because it's or that big city, and it was a big city. So, <coughs> excuse me. Anyway, what was the converse, controversy that God had with Israel or with uh, Nineveh? Nineveh was believed to be one of the meanest cities that ever existed. They had many ways of putting people to death, horrible ways. So we, we see that Jonah 
is a man at home. He's a man of God. God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to preach to him. And then Jonah said, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But God gave him a second chance. Now, how many times, and I don't know, I'm not going to even try to rest, rest, I'm not even going to try to guess how many I got into, but when Mama and Daddy would tell me to do something, and uh, Daddy would go off to work and Mama would get busy, I needed a second chance. <laughs> you ever been like that? I've even done it on jobs where I'd rather, do, I'd rather let one of the other guys do it as do it myself. But Jonah said, I'm not going. So he made a run for it. But God says, I have a controversy with the, with the people. I want you to go to back. I want you to do what I tell you to this time. And he, what did he tell it, Jonah to do? Preach what I tell you to. Not what you want to preach. If we did, we'd be over in Acts tonight. But we won't get there. So, but the fact is, we, the thing is that we have the controversy that, that God had with his people. What is our troubles in our country today? Are we, do you think we have a controversy with God or does God have a controversy with us? God has a controversy with America. And I couldn't help but think as God, as, we, as I studied this week on this, uh, you know, the thing about it, we see Jonah, we see God uh, sending Jonah back to Nineveh. Here's Jonah going into this city that's three days long. That's a long city. Walk, take three days to walk across it. <laughs> so he said, but I want you to go and I want you to preach what I tell you to. You know, today, the thing I see happening in our churches, not just Baptists, all churches, is the fact that men are not preaching the Bible. <laughs> men are not preaching the Bible. We are all hung up on, uh, and I told some of the deacons when I came here the first time I think I visited, I do not like series of messages. I don't, I never have practiced preaching one. I know I don't like them. Uh, to me, for you to lock your thoughts in on a way that you're going to preach the same message or a message on the same thing, year, day after day or week after week, and you, 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 you've committed yourself, then what can, what can God tell you to do? Tell you a little story about what God can tell you to do. We uh, moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, they had a real good friend that was a pastor of a little church out in uh, uh, Huey Town. And so we decided we'd come back down. My mother still lived in West End. We decided we'd come back down and see what was going on. Well, Tommy Colvin was the preacher's name. And he said, uh, so anyway, we decided we'd go out to their church that, that Sunday morning because we were still here. And uh, we thought it started at 11, started at 1030. So anyway, when we got there, uh, the, uh, they had, had their singing and their announcements and things like that. And the preacher was up in the, pod up in the pulpit behind the podium. And he says, uh, I haven't got a message for you this week, today. I said, God didn't give me one. He said, we're going to have one that would be here. Well, when we opened the door, he said, and here is the message. Not prepared, <laughs> but still, I always have a pretty good, can't nobody hear me? Huh? You're, you're wondering. Wondering what? You're wandering back and forth. Oh. You're wandering. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Hold on. 
Sorry, sorry. It's just Jimmy's fault. He told me to do it. Okay. Jimmy told me to do it. Okay. All right. Now it's loud enough, isn't it? All right. But anyway, the to catch a young preacher, I had I had not been preaching very long at the time. And as I walked in the door, he said, God told me you had the message today. I said, huh? He said, yeah. So anyway, I, uh, I had the message. But, you know, the thing about it is, on a message like that, excuse me, please, on a message after, like that, you collect the, uh, you, you get, uh, so, I guess you'd call it uh, unorganized, that God can give you just what he wants you to say. And so anyway, as we look at this night, Jonah is going to Nineveh. Nineveh. <coughs> he preaches. Nineveh changes their ways. And how, what happens when they do? Where do they go? What do they do to change their ways? Who do you go to? They went to God. They started, were, they, they were afraid of this God. And so when they, when Jonah comes through there and says, 40 days, God's going to destroy, destroy your city, the king said, whoa, wait a minute. Not an animal, not a person, not a beast, a herd, nobody, nothing. will do anything for the next three days except fast. Because that's, and so the king wrapped, got, took off his robe and, Dressed in the uh, ashes, sackcloth, and uh, everybody else had to. So that that was a sign of repentance to God. And God told uh, uh, Jonah, said, okay, I won't do what I had to. But did none of them know that? No. The question came, will God destroy us? All in, in the same way that he had said he would? No. He said, I will not destroy them because they have taken the second chance that I gave Jonah. So, <coughs> y'all excuse me. So anyway, uh, as uh, that happens on through, we find that, uh, uh, so the result of the, con of the uh, controversy was the fact that the people repented. How are we today? What could we do today that would help or that would solve the, serve, the problems we have in our nation, our cities, our states? We could go to God. That's the only thing we can do. We can go to God and he can do it. But the fact is, we, we're spending our money, our time, and God's time Right now, worrying about Christmas. And the thing about it is, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, we, we forget about God. I just don't put it straight. We forget about God. How many people would you guess that would take their tithe and buy Christmas presents? <laughs> How many people? A lot of them I know. Because you know something? At one time I was as guilty of it as somebody else. Why? Because I thought I had to. I was following the world. I was doing what the world wanted me to, to do, what Satan wanted the world to do. And so we were caught, we were uh, confused. And uh, so this is what's wrong with the people here where Jonah is. They are wrapped up in sin and they can't get out because uh, the world uh, is uh, a little bit stronger than they are and uh, than we are. And so until we can do what Nineveh did, we can't defeat what's going on in our world today. 
We've got problems, but the problem is who's who's the problem? We Sir? We got our own we, we've got our own problems, that's true, but who do we blame for the conditions of the world today? Got a good answer there. Everybody else. Why do we do that? Well, uh, we'll see that uh, that's the way we do things. We blame everybody else. We we don't want to take credit for it. And so we see here in the fact that <coughs> uh, Jonah uh, uh, gets mad with God and goes on to get hid under a gourd brush or rind somewhere. But the fact is, God still dealing with with Jennifer, and yet we look at the city or people of Israel and their uh, dealing with God and dealing with God and their uh, being part of God's uh, people that, uh, you know, the people of Israel are the luckiest people in the world. They've got God on their side, and I don't care what happens. He's going to be on their side. Uh, I always said, since uh, since I was old enough to think about having to join the services, I always said, if anybody goes, if America goes to fight in Israel, I'm going to be a traitor. I'm going to Israel. <laughs> I was like, hey, go win. And you know, our neighbors across the waters have proven that several times. They're not going to win. Those people over there are hard-headed. And so, anyway, we want to do things. But the fact is that uh, the, uh, the fact, the, the, the thing that I wanted to try to bring into this was the fact that, they, that Jesus, you know, the God that was with dealing with uh, Nineveh, was, they, was he different than the God dealing with us today? Was he any better, any worse, any stronger? No, he was the same God that's dealing with us today, and he's dealing with us in the same troubles that Israel had in the days that he dealt with them. Uh, they saw, they was, uh, I read an article on Jonah, and it gave a description of all that they were doing as far as uh, sins. You know, there's a lot of them. But there wasn't any of them that's not being done today. There is no new sins in the world. And besides that, God doesn't say that he don't forgive our sins. He doesn't even say he says sin. S-I-N. It don't matter what it is, how big it is, how little it is, it's a sin. No S. So we need to remember that. But the fact is, we as a people today, I kept thinking, I said, well, you know, Lord, if, uh, if, if you were so good to Nineveh, a city that was so mean and uh, destructive and everything, why come... We can't get our nation a second chance. Why come we can't figure out how to do it? And then I thought, well, you gave us that. You brought us Jesus, your son. You sent your son here to die for the world. Long after Israel and Nineveh had their troubles, and yet we've got this, this gift, this freedom, <laughs> That we don't even have to pay anything for. We don't have to do anything for. Do we? The way we act, we don't. But my friend, let me tell you something. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, it cost somebody something. It cost God the Son. 
and he died on that cross. And he made it possible for us to go to him. He says, I'm the truth, the way, the light. You follow me? Uh, that's what God was doing for us through Jesus Christ, his son. We have a way out if we as God's people would just use it. Now, do, do you blame the lost people for the way the world's going today? Mm -mm. It, ain't, it ain't the lost people's fault. It's our fault. It's the Christian people's fault. I made that statement one time and a preacher told me, he said, son, you, know, you need to read the Bible. I said, okay, where do you want me to start? <coughs> but he didn't tell me. But nevertheless, we need to realize that it is us, and this has been covered very well by Brother Toby in the uh, books he's been, the book he's been studying with us, but we need to realize that it is not the lost people or the uh, uh, sinners, uh, but it is God's people that God deals with. And it's God's people that's the cause of where we're at today just as it was for Israel. Because of the fact that since it's now, we are now looking at Christmas, which is the celebration of the birthday of Christ, and yet we're more involved in spending money on the world, in the world, buying gifts, things that probably won't never get used. Uh, you know, these uh, little things you have, like, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Santa... Uh, Secret Santa, is that what it's called? Yeah, okay. Or you have parties and uh, you buy a gift. In fact, my wife and I went to one yesterday. <laughs> Where you. <laughs> and you, you know, it, uh, we went to one, and, and you, would you believe some of the things that an adult man or an adult woman would go and buy to give somebody else because they knew they wasn't going to get their present back. But they got, the, they got that. Anyway, supposed to spend not more than $10. Do you know what you'd buy for $10 today? <laughs> you can't give much. But anyway, my wife and I went to Walmart and we bought something for, ever, for the to take as a present. And I bought a I guess or not, I might or not tell this. But anyway, I bought my, I bought the Axe, 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 yeah, Axe. You know, that's the shaving and lotion and the cream and everything in a box. Nine ninety eight. I said, boy, howdy, I spent less than ten dollars. <laughs> and then I, when I, when it got to the party anyway, I told my wife to go to the party. I said, you know what? I said, if they let us go up and get our own presents, I'm going to get mine. She said, why? I said, because I'm going to get my money back. <laughs> That's the kind of guy I am. Uh, but nevertheless, the fact is, hey, we enjoy the parties, and God intended for Christians to be fun, be have fun and be in, in, enjoy life. He didn't intend us to go around with sad faces even though we're sick and we don't have the cure for everything but the fact is that we as Christian people today have to start doing what we are supposed to do now I know as I pre I've been pastor of several churches and I know when you ask a, a church to Pray for somebody. Never, I don't, has, ask anybody to hold up a hand. Why? Some of them will never do it, and you know what you've just caused them to do? See? So, yes, it's okay to ask the church to pray. 
That's just like uh, I've asked you to pray for me while I was going through all this sickness and stuff. But you see, the thing is, we want to uh, uh, we want to use God when we need Him, and not when they need Him. We need to think about it. We need to be involved in the in the uh, process of doing just what Brother Toad has been teaching us to uh, how to go out and win people to the Lord. But one thing I don't. And uh, I'm not. I'm not kicking. I mean, I know he's teaching the book, but the thing that is the fact that uh, I need. I think we ought to be more direct with giving people the story of Christ. Uh, you know, there's Billy Graham said that over 50 percent. And this is several years ago. Over 50 percent of Baptist people. Uh, it belonged to a Baptist church, was lost. And before he died, it was 75%. Now that's, that's terrible. So how, do, how can we as Christians make it? It's because we're interested in numbers. We're interested in money. We're interested in big buildings. We're interested in everything in the world except... God, and he made it all. It's all his, and believe me, he can take it anytime he wants it. So we need to realize something, people. We need to realize that when God sent Nineveh, Jonah to Nineveh, he sent it there, why? Because he loved the people. He created them. They were his creation. He loved them, and he wanted them to be saved. He didn't create man so we'd have somebody to put in hell. He created man so he'd have fellowship. So where's where's the where's the fun in it? I tell you what, it's the greatest feeling you'll ever have when you win somebody to Christ and they they just go to, they just get so happy. And I've had that experience. And I've had one or two that I uh, witnessed to and went with and uh, pl uh, was associated with that uh, went somewhere else and the preacher there preached and they joined Christ. They got they got saved. So the preacher called me and he said, "Appreciate the cousin, the new client, uh, new uh, member you gave me." I said, "Sir," he said, "Yeah, I got uh, a man here that says you witnessed to him and that uh, you explained how." what Christ was and how he come into the world and said, uh, then the preacher preached on Christ today and said, I, I, I just had to call you and tell you. I got saved. The preacher didn't have to tell me. He called, he beat the preacher. <laughs> but you see, the thing I'm trying to say is this, people. We are God's people. We have a job to do. And until we as God's people get on the ball and do what we're supposed to do and we don't be afraid or ashamed. You know, the Bible, the Bible says that when we get to, that some of them get to heaven, they'll start telling Christ what all they've done for him. And what does he say? You were ashamed of me on earth. I'm ashamed of you here. It's sad. It's serious. And my friends, I don't know how much longer Christ is going to be getting here. And I don't worry about that. All I worry about is the people that I come into contact with. Do I, get, do I try to win or everyone or do I speak to everyone about Christ? Yes, I try. Now, there's some that won't. They ain't going to take time to talk to you much. But I will try my best at least to get in some little punch somewhere. Because that one little punch may cause them to start thinking. And the more people we win to Christ, the more Christians that we cause to be in our churches, the more churches we will see that will get active for God 
and the more churches we will see that will begin to grow for God, and the more churches that we will see, we will see them growing in the community and in the, in the cities and states. So we need to do some thinking seriously about our uh, things. Uh, but anyway, I want to uh, uh, read just a couple of verses from over in John, the 14th chapter, of the, uh, well, 6th verse. It says, after these things, Jesus went over uh, the sea. Uh, wait, yeah, okay. After these things, Jesus went over the sea of Galilee, which is the sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his, the, his miracles, which he did on them that we were deceased. Now, what did Christ do? You may not be able to speak to someone without some training. Now, I believe everyone can tell what God's done for. But you may not be. You may be a little shy, timid, whatever you want to call it. But you know what? Christ did more with what he was living than he did what he was preaching. Billy, I'll tell you what, there's, there's a preacher here in Leeds. If I'm in, Wal if I'm in the Walmart line and he gets in behind me, I'm going to move. I don't care if I am a Christian because I know what we're going to do. We're going to talk about God. And I, if you're lost and get, he gets behind you, it doesn't make no difference to him. Sooner or later, you're going to talk about Christ. So that's the way it goes. And that's what we have got to do. That's our job. Speak about Jesus. Live the life that someone will see and say, I want what you got. I want what you got. If you, ain't, if you, can't, if you can't, if someone can't look at your life and tell that you're uh, happy as and that you're enjoying life a little bit, and that uh, you get smiles on your face, and uh, that you not uh, that you don't get mad and blow your the temper every time somebody steps on a little toe or something. <laughs> but you you've got to you've got to live what you preach. That's all we can do. So let me tell you this. I believe the greatest testimony that any of us has is the life that we live. I'll tell you one little story and I'm going to be through. We had a guy that worked at uh, UAB while I was working there. And he uh, had an alcohol problem and he, they had him in special treatment. They couldn't fire him. He was on an experimental program. They couldn't fire him. And he was, uh, I mean, tough alcoholic. And uh, he, uh, the, everything that he said, he had a little descriptive adjective to go with it, if you know what I mean. So anyway, he, uh, he got out uh, into uh, the city and one of the other cities around him. <laughs> he got uh, caught with, uh, in fact, he and his wife had broke up and he had all of his clothes and guns in the back seat of his car. And they arrested him and put him in jail. And uh, so he tried, couldn't get uh, hold of his wife or mother-in-law. or uh, So he called the shop at UAB. I just happened to be there. I answered the phone. And uh, I, I said, UAB maintenance, James Maddox. And he said, James, don't hang up, don't hang up, don't hang up, because we were not supposed to take calls on those phones. But I did. And he said, uh, don't hang up. said, uh, I've got to talk to somebody. And said, I need to get a hold of my wife or mother-in-law and uh, take care of 
and get him to come get me out of jail. I said, okay. So I listened to him. He told me what had happened and everything. And I called. I said, okay, I'll call him. And he gave me the phone number. And I did. I called him. They went and got him out of jail, brought him back home. Uh, and he uh, took some time off, and he went from uh, UAB. He lived there around UAB somewhere. Back up here somewhere above Talladega. That's where his mother lived. And so when we, when he did, uh, he got uh, sober, uh, and uh, they put him, of course, in rehab. And uh, when he got sober and started back to work, he was coming somewhere around the river bridge on 20. Had a wreck, it killed him. But he had told his mother, and you know, this is something I'll always remember. He had told his mother, and he told me first, he said, James, you're a preacher. And he said, I never have had anything to do with preachers. He said, I don't like them, I don't trust them. But he says, you're honest, and you help us anytime we need us. I said, yeah. He said, uh, well, anyway, but his mother told me, excuse me, at the funeral, she said, James, I want to just tell you, my son told me that if it hadn't have been for you, he'd go to hell. But you convinced him that Christ was the way. And I come to find out he had gone, while he was staying with his mother, he had gone to church with her. He had heard the preacher. He had joined Christ. Now, buddy, if that won't make you shout, that'll make you shout. So you see, the thing that is, if we live a life, and I had another, well, no, there was another guy that was there the same way, uh, but he, uh, he wasn't that type of person as far as uh, habits, but he was uh, one of these... Uh, I don't believe in God deals. <laughs> and one day he came to me, and, and UAB is like any other construction place if you're in the maintenance department. If you don't want to hear it, you don't need to be there. But anyway, this boy was, everything he said was curse words. And so one day we were doing something, and I happened to be on the same job he was on. He uh, said, James, I'm going to tell you something. I said, okay. I didn't know what was coming. He said, I'm going to tell you right now, you're the only preacher that I've ever known that I believe. Because every time, every time he'd say one of them words, you know what I'd ask him? Don't, please don't use that kind of language. Don't cuss my God. And he finally, it finally got to where we worked together and nothing, nothing ever happened as far as that type of something. Talk. Why? Because of the fact. And it wasn't that I was witnessing or preaching every day. It was the fact of what I stood for and how I stood. So you see, it's not always what we do as far as speaking, but how we live what we say. So I let me let, just leave it with that, and I'll tell you right now, the fact is, uh, chapter, uh, verse 4 we read tonight, uh, uh, you, know, you know what verse 4 actually said in that scripture? Don't pass the book. Accept your personal responsibility for the guilt. That's for each and every one of us. Me and please. All right, let's pray. Father God, we come asking you to be with us tonight as we've brought the message that you gave us. And Father, we ask that you just help us to uh, depend upon you. And Father, that we trust you and let you lead us and guide us. And Lord, we ask now that if uh, there be any decision that needs to be made, that while we sing a song of invitation, that you'd make it. If not, Lord, then just uh, 
uh, go with us as we go home, protect us, and bring us back again the next time we have our church doors open. And Lord, help us each and every one to live what we preach and how we are supposed to each and every day. For we ask it in Christ our Savior's name. Amen. Amen. You back behind me? Okay. Let's turn to page. God, I can't read. Stand. Yeah, let's stand and turn to page 366. Satan said, I'm going to stop you. But I said, no, you're not. And so you saw what, <laughs> you saw it tonight. So just thank you for being patient and putting up with it. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Thank you. 